We are going to be learning how to make a rag doll trigger on impact. So this tutorial is going to assume that you know how to set up the mechanim to play an animation clip. Otherwise, you're going to have to go learn that with another tutorial first because that's too much for me to cover here. I'm also going to assume that you've already created a rag doll. And if not, I'm going to send you over to a very detailed tutorial that Bracky did because this tutorial is mainly focusing on how to trigger the rag dolls, not how to make them. And we are also going to be using a bit of C sharp. Before I show you the code, this is basically how it works. You need to think of your character as having two distinct modes, one ragdoll mode on and the other ragdoll mode off. So this is him before he gets ragdolled. In this example, he's got an animator that's just playing an animation clip on a loop. Let me just put a thing around this to avoid confusion. He's got a box collider to detect collisions. You can't see it right now, but trust me, it's there. This will also stop him from falling through the floor. And he's got a rigid body. That's a rigid body there, trust me. So when his ragdoll mode switches on, this animator is gonna switch off, this box collider is gonna switch off, and this rigid body is gonna switch off. So all these colliders and rigid bodies that you would have made when you made your ragdoll are gonna switch on. So all of these colliders, as well as all of their rigid bodies. So again, these elements have switched off and these elements down here have switched on. So before he's ragdolled, he's just got one big collider and one rigid body that represents the physics of his whole body. But when he's ragdolled, he has colliders and rigid bodies for each and every one of his limbs so they can all do physics separately. So other than the functions that are going to turn all these things on and off respectively, we also need a function that will grab all of these ragdoll pieces for us so we don't have to list them all individually and a function that will detect when the big collider has taken a hit, so we know to do all this stuff. All right, so make sure you've got the top of your character selected. That's where we're gonna put all this stuff and start adding the components that we just talked about. We have an animator with a controller and an avatar. We've got a big old box collider that covers most of the middle of his being. And then we've got a rigid body. And finally, we add the script. Add script, new script. I'm gonna call it ragdoll on off, but since I already have one called that, we're gonna call it uh, ragdoll on off example. Right click it, edit script. All right, so let's just close these up and let's get rid of these comments. So remember that box collider, the big old one that goes around his whole body? We're going to make a variable for that. And uh, we're just going to call it public box collider. And I'm just going to call it the main collider. Next thing we need to make is a game object that represents the top of this uh, rig here because we're going to do a couple of processes that are going to go all the way down through the rig and select a bunch of things. So we're going to make a public game object. I'm going to call it this guy's rig. We are also going to make a variable that represents this animator. That will be a public animator. Let's call it this guy's animator. So we're going to make a method. This is called ragdoll, oopsie daisies, ragdoll mode on. And we're going to make another one that's called ragdoll mode. You guessed it, off. We are also going to need a method that detects when our boy has been struck by something. And so we're going to use something called private void on collision enter. And as you see, it detected the rest and I just hit enter and it just put it all there for me. And we're also going to make a method whose job it is to grab all of the rigid bodies and colliders that were generated when we created the ragdoll. So we're going to call this one void get ragdoll bits. And then of course, got to put our brackets in there. So let's start by flushing out the get ragdoll bits. We're going to need some variables that can hold these ragdoll bits. So we're going to say collider, and then we're going to put these little bracket boys at the end. And that means that it's an array. An array is like a collection of things. So a collection of colliders, and we're going to name it uh, ragdoll colliders. 
I'm going to capitalize that. Okay, and then the next collection of things we gotta collect are the rigid bodies. So we're gonna say rigid body, and we're gonna call this limbs rigid bodies. All right, so now we gotta tell it what to put in these things. So here's where we write the code that says, go through everything under here, grab all the colliders and all the rigid bodies, okay? Um, so we're gonna say ragdoll colliders is gonna equal this guy's rig dot get component in children. And what kind of component do we want to get in all the children? We want to grab the colliders, of course. Oh, I see why it underlined it. I accidentally put get component. I need get components because we're grabbing several colliders. Now it's happy. It's going to grab all these colliders and it's going to put them in this array right here called ragdoll colliders. And we're going to do the same for the rigid bodies. So limbs, rigid bodies array. We're going to fill that with disguise rig, get components in children. Uh, what are we getting? We're getting rigid bodies. All right, we're gonna go down here and tell it what to do with that. So we're gonna start here with, oh, I spelled that badly, ragdoll mode off, because that's the mode that we're gonna start in when we hit play on the game, isn't it? So we're gonna use a for each loop to loop through everything in this array, which remember is like a collection of things in this collider collection, and we're gonna do this to each and every one of them. So for each collider, and we'll, we have to give the colliders individually a name. So we'll just call it call in ragdoll colliders. Where is it? There, there it is. It found it. Good stuff. Call dot enabled equals false. So here's that, that little nickname call. Turn the colliders off one by one for each of them. And we're gonna do kind of the same thing with our collection of rigid bodies that we made, or array, our array of rigid bodies. I'll spare you the typing and just copy paste this one. So similar thing for each rigid body. I just gave it each individual one a nickname of rigid in limbs rigid bodies. That's the one that we made up there. And we're going to tell it to turn each of them to kinematic mode, which means that they are not going to be moving him around or affecting him. It's kind of like just turning them off, really. And then we got to make sure that that big collider, the big main box collider that we put on him here is switched on. So um, remember we named that one main collider. We'll go main collider enabled equals true. And similarly, we want to get that main rigid body, that one right there, so we'll do this one a little bit differently. Instead of making a variable to contain it, we could also just use get component to get it. You could interchange this. You could do the, the collider one this way as well. I'm kind of just trying to show two different ways of getting this and affecting it. So um, we'll just say get component rigid body dot is kinematic equals false. So, so let's put one more thing in here. This guy's animator dot enabled equals true. All right, so this is the mode he starts in. His ragdoll is switched off. Let's go to what happens when his ragdoll is switched on. It's gonna be pretty much the same, but opposite. So we can actually just copy paste this and change all these trues and falses around. We want all of his colliders, his limb colliders, when ragdoll is turned on, we want those to turn on. So enabled equals true. We want uh, the rigid bodies and all of his limbs to not be in kinematic mode at that point. So that goes false. Animator will want to switch that off. We'll actually want that to be the first thing that happens. So I'm going to move that up. Dude, there we go. And of course, this becomes false. So his main collider is off and this becomes True, so his main rigid body is no longer affecting things all right, so now we'll go back up to these two guys that I closed right away, the start method. And something that we're gonna want to happen right away is we're gonna want to get all those ragdoll bits. So let's tell it to do that. Just go get ragdoll bits. And then we tell it also that we want to make sure that right away ragdoll mode is off to start. So do that, ragdoll mode is off, there it is. Some of these and one of those. All right, now we need to go to our collision. We got to add something out here to the object that's going to collide with it. And that's going to be a tag so that it knows what to register as a hit. If we don't add a tag to it, the problem's going to be the moment that he collides with the ground, that's going to be considered a collision. And then it's going to trigger the ragdoll right away. And that's kind of useless. So here's the cube that goes and smacks Scout in the face. And this cube has a tag that I put on it called knockdown cube. And then 
then in the script, I use that tag to make sure that Scout only collapses when he gets hit by something with the tag knockdown cube. So for this to work, whatever, you know, bullet bill thing or fireball or whatever you're going to smack into your character, you just go up here, click this, go down to the bottom, add tag, click the little plus guy, name it something, my new collision tag, which is a terrible name, but that's what I'm just using for this example. And now you've got a tag. I would then just go up here and go to my tag and select it. This cube, by the way, is being moved through the air with a really simple script. If you would like to copy my super advanced projectile moving script, here it is on the screen now. It's pretty basic. So back in our ragdoll script here, I'm going to go down to this method, the on collision enter. I'm going to fill this in really quick. Super, super simple. If collision.gameobject.tag equals whatever you just named your fancy new tag, and it has to be case sensitive, exactly what you named your tag. Ah, uh, why did I give it such a long name? My new collision tag, there we go, and tell it what to do. It will do this thing down here, ragdoll mode on. So we'll say ragdoll mode on, there it is. Why didn't you go do that? Okay, so now we're gonna go and test it out. So we're gonna have to make sure that we save, always save so that it updates over in the editor. Close this down, select our guy here, make sure that our script now has all of these boys filled in. And if it doesn't, uh, this animator is this animator here. This guy's rig is this thing right here. This guy's main collider is this collider right there. So now what we should see, this box should hit our boy here, and he should ragdoll. There he goes. And as you can see, Scout over here is still trying to be animated, because if you'll remember, we changed that tag and he's looking for a different tag. So he's not quite functioning right. That is what will happen if you don't get your tag right. Well, yeah, over here we have a successfully ragdolled boy. So that wraps it up. So I'll just do one last scroll through this code here. We used box collider called main collider, game object called this guy's rig, animator called this guy's animator. This is what's in the start. It gets the ragdoll bits and it triggers ragdoll mode to be off to begin with. In the collision enter, we are hit by an object with a tag called that. It will trigger ragdoll mode on. Here we've got two more variables, ragdoll colliders and limb rigid bodies. These are two arrays, remember, and they are holding all of these colliders and rigid bodies. And then of course there's our big methods, ragdoll mode on and ragdoll mode off. Something to double check. On ragdoll mode on, disabling the animator happens first at the top, above these for each loops. And on ragdoll mode off, the animator is enabled last after the for each loops. All right, so if you're still watching and you're still here to learn stuff, I wanted to explain something a little bit further. You'll remember I said that I showed you how to get these components in two different ways. Well, so you could, instead of creating this guy's animator and main collider or whatever else you want to call them, you could just use get component for all of them. And that will work as long as this script always stays on the same game object as all of these components, because that's how get component finds things. And on the other hand, you could also change this get rigid body to be like the others for consistency, and you could create something called like this guy's rigid body, and then it would be this guy's rigid body is kinematic. You'd have to then, of course, make that variable just like we made the other ones. Public rigid body. This guy's rigid body. And that would work too. And there's benefits to doing it either way. So using git component is a good approach if you know that this script is always going to be here, right next to all of these other things. You wouldn't then have to fill in any of these, this would just be an empty thing that said script. And it would take care of all of that filling in for you. So that's nice and convenient. It could have a downside if you decided to either move this script to another game object. Maybe you decided you'd rather put it down on his rig because you've got other scripts there and you want to keep all your scripts together or something. If you just moved this script and left all these guys behind, it'll break. If you use variables to represent all these things, it doesn't matter where the script is put, so you could move it and it would all still work. You could put these components somewhere else as well, like let's say instead of putting the box collider directly on him right here, you wanted to create a cube and then scale it. So in this case, this collider is on a completely different game object. It's under the character still, but it's it's not 
in the same game object as the script anymore, but it would be okay. You could just grab it from here and put it here. So it, it really doesn't matter where that particular collider actually lives if you do it this way with variables. It's also nice to use the variables because then you don't have to write this big long git component rigmarole in front of everything. It's just cleaner, easier to read, I guess. So either way works. It all just depends on how you're trying to structure what you're doing. So there, hopefully all of that is clear. Um, I'm not the most advanced programmer, but hopefully that should give you some encouragement if you're super new. Um, this is all very doable stuff. This is not super advanced programming stuff. This is stuff that you can figure out on your own with an internet video as I did. I don't really make tutorials, so uh, let me know if this was a good one, if it worked for you, if you'd like to see more. I just had some requests to explain how I did this, so I did. Good luck on your programming and learning adventure. Now go make something cool.